Hey y'all, thanks for checking out Eco Mining. Today we're gonna be hooking up my Gold Shell SC box. I got this in the mail just recently. And if you saw my last video, the unboxing, I was super excited to get this. So I wanna get this thing fired up. We're gonna be using DX Pool. We're using the firmware that comes stock on the Gold Shell box. Um, it does not come with a power supply, so you have to get one separately. So we're gonna briefly first talk about power supplies and what you can use for this. Then we'll do the um, uh, configuration for the pool. And then afterwards, we'll talk a little bit about profitability. So first off, let's go ahead and hop over and find out how much power the Gold Shell uses. So this is the SC box and it uses 200 watts plus or minus 5%. So let's go on the high end of this and that's 210 watts to run this miner. Now, Gold Shell does offer a power supply that you can get from them. It's right here. It's $200. Now, I had several power supplies, so I didn't want to buy theirs uh, and spend an extra $200 on it. It's a 1,200-watt power supply. It supports up to four boxes. That's what they offer. It's up to you if you want to get that. Now, I'm not an electrician, so definitely can, you know consult with a licensed electrician. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about power supplies really quick and the ones that I'm using. So right here, I use Parallel Miner. I don't have an affiliate link. I'm not sponsored by them. I just use them all the time. They're one of the best ones out there. They typically have their stock um, uh, in stock and uh, really have no problems. Now, during the boom, of course, a lot of it was out of stock because everybody and their mother was mining and trying to get power supplies. But they've got them here. So there's some different options you can go to shop and then power supply kits. It makes it super easy. You can come right here and you can buy one. Now, I'm going to show you one that's relatively inexpensive and should power your miner with no problem. It's this one right here. It's a 750 watt power supply. Now, this one, we choose options. We just choose our typical home electric. We can choose which breakout board we want. We really only need the bare bones for this, so we can just get the cheap one right there. And then for cables, you are gonna need to get a couple cables to hook your miner up. They come with these one right like this. It's a six pin on one end and a six plus two on the other. If you're not familiar with the extra two pins, something like your GPUs, take an eight pin connector. So you put this one, you slide this down on top and you can create an eight pin connection for it. We only need six and six, so we're fine with this. And that's exactly what these wires are here. And that's what that six plus two pin means. So you have to get eight is the minimum. And if you see that, it's $60. Now, let's do some quick math on this. Again, I'm not an electrician, but let's just do the math. And it seems to make sense. But if you look at a 750-watt power supply and you only want to use the 90% rule, which means you only use 90% total power of what the power supply uh, uh, offers. So we want to take out 10% of the 750, which brings us down to 675. We know this uses a maximum of 210 watts. So if we had three of these, we'd be at 630 watts. This one can go to 675, no problem. So realistically, you'd be able to plug in three miners on this one uh, power supply and it cost you 60 bucks. So the other one was 200 bucks and you got four miners could connect to it. This one is $60 and you can plug in three miners to it. And to show you the breakout boards really quick, just so you can see the one I'm talking about, this is the lowest end one, which is more than enough because you should technically only need three connections because you'd only have three miners hooked up to this. So this should be enough. Now there are other breakout boards you can pick from and you can do research on looking into them. This is one right here. And as a matter of fact, that's the one that I'll be using in the video today. Uh, I bought this one specific because I was doing it for GPU mining. So I bought this one with the double readout. You don't need any of these real fancy things for running these boxes. Again, this was specific to what I was doing with GPUs. I just happened to have these, so I'm using them. Just always remember if you buy these parts separately that the compatibility is straight. And I'm going to just show you that really quick. And I want to get off on a uh, tangent here. But uh, you click on a breakout board that say you have a breakout board. And if you scroll down, you can find the one that I have, which is this one right here, the X11 amp. And if you scroll down on that one, you can see right here the different power supplies that are compatible with it. If you hold Control and hit F on your keyboard, you could bring up a little search window. You probably can't see it way up top here, but it's right here. And you can type in the model that's on your power supply. It needs to match exactly as it is here. Um, I have a 750 watt and I have a 1200 watt power supply. I did buy that breakout board separately, so compatibility is gonna be a little different. So when you look these up, there are a couple things. I'm just gonna do this really quick because I don't want you to make a mistake if you go in this direction. So this one is the 643932, and that one is right here. 
Okay, so you'd say, okay, yeah, it's dash 001, so I'm good to go. But the real thing is that you want to get the entire line. Now, mine is an HSTNS PL29. This is a PD29 on the list. This will not be compatible. You will blow out the breakout board, you could blow out the power supply, and you could blow out your miner. So if you're buying these separately, make sure that the compatibility is exactly the same. So for this one, I can't do this one because I bought this one separately a while back. So I am going to have to use my 1200 watt power supply. I did look it up already and it is in the list. So, and it is exactly the PD 11. Uh, let's see here, the 4785-001, and there it is right there. So I know that this one is exactly right. So we're going to be using this one today. It's easier if you just buy it as a power supply kit because they do all the legwork and make sure that the breakout board is compatible with the power supply. Plus, they give you the wires. You're set to go. 60 bucks out the door. And uh, in my opinion, that's better than the 200 but that's again, it's your pocket, your pocketbook. You do what's best for you. It's not financial advice to buy these. It's not my advice to buy them at all because I'm not an electrician. Anyway, let's get into setting this thing up. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to power this thing on. So let me go ahead and hook this all together so we can fire this thing up. So first things first, how do we hook this up? Well. Pretty straightforward. Take the breakout board, take your wire. It doesn't matter which side you use. You can use the one with the extra pin or you can use the flat one uh, or the, the single six pin. And you just simply plug that right into the board and it just clips right in. If you can see that. I don't think you need to zoom in, but you got it. Uh, you got that and we take this end here. We look on the back of the gold shell, we can see it's got the uh, Wi-Fi, the LAN, and then the power connection right there. So again, that's a six pin. We're just gonna take the six pin part and we're just going to plug it straight in like that. So we don't have to worry about that extra one. It's just going to hang out there. So we've got that set up. Now we need to hook the breakout board to the actual power supply. Let me spin these around in my hand so you can see them. We're going to take it. It just fits right into the slot. And that's it. You're set to go. So we're going to put that one down right here. We are going to need the RJ45. This does have a wireless connection, but we're going to use the RJ45 to initially get this going. And then once we're in the miner, we can set it up for Wi-Fi. And then if you want to move this around, you can simply take this just and move it anywhere you want and put it anywhere you want in your house. Um, and, you know, uh, it's very mobile with the Wi-Fi enabled on that. But for now, we're going to use the RJ45 regular network cable. And we're just going to put that in like that. So we've got the power connection to it. We've got the breakout board, the power supply. We've got the ethernet plugged in. The only other thing to do is to plug in power. So I've got the uh, power right here and we're just gonna plug that right into the HP power supply. And then on the breakout board itself, it has a power button. So we're just gonna go ahead and push that. I'm gonna pause the video while I push this because it does a fan test. So it spins up the fans real loud. Once that's done, I'll come right back and we'll finish setting this up inside the miner and doing the scan to find it. All right, so I got that all set up and the fans did their uh, initial spin up. So now we need to find the miner on the um, on the network. So what I like to use is Advanced Port Scanner. It's right here. Of course, any of the websites I used to have links in the description below. Uh, for this one, you can go ahead and download it for free. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start mine up. And we'll minimize this so you can see it. We're going to go ahead and run the scan. So we're going to let this run. It usually takes about 60 seconds. Once it starts to scan your network, anything that comes up in blue is active. Anything that comes up uh, in gray is inactive. So let's just let this run and we will find our box. You can typically find it by the name um, of what it is. And if you're not sure, you can simply highlight any one of them and use the arrow keys and just work your way down. You're looking for HTTP, and there it is right there. You can see that. Now, this is for my Bobcat, so it's not that one. So we're going to keep going. And I think it's that one. Uh, where'd it go? And there it is right there. So we've got the HTTP, so we can click on that one. And here is the miner. Now it comes to you stock in Chinese. So unless you read Chinese, you're going to want to go ahead and click on this and change it to English. Unless you don't speak English or Chinese, then you're probably not doing too well. We're going to click unlock in here. We're going to put the password. Now the password comes default 123456789 as it's shown right there on the screen. So 123, can I type 123? nine and we'll go ahead and unlock that it's going to want you to go ahead and change the password so we can do that and you can do that in system 
uh, if you scroll down you can change that password right here I highly recommend that you do um, and take care of that in here is where you can set up the Wi-Fi settings you just simply click on whichever one that you have and then click connect and put your password in it should connect for the Wi-Fi and then like I said you can move the miner anywhere you want unless you have LAN connections in each of your rooms then in that you really won't have to worry about it but if you're gonna be putting this somewhere where you don't have hardwire this is an option I think that's a great option so you can do that what we're gonna do is we'll just click on minor in here we're gonna click add now we are gonna be using DX uh, pool and this is it here you can come in and um, get the uh, let's see it's down here you can get the information right here for yourself it tells you what to put in my account is Euclid mining so you can uh, you, you would need to use the username of Euclid mining or as they see here something like Euclid mining dot worker name so that's gonna be your naming convention and then you have to put the password in that you use on DX pool so let's go back over to gold shell and right here they do have the three that are available I think Luxor is down right now for this mining uh, but you can just click DX pool in here the minor name so we're gonna do dot you know or we'll just do yeah we'll just do actually box okay so there you go then you have to put the password in that you're using on your um, on DX pool so I've got that right in there we click apply now as you can see this is grayed out right now we're just gonna hit that uh, and now it's turned green so once it's green it's connected with the pool and it is gonna start mining I don't know if you can hear it down below me it's starting to power up and get going so if we go to home we should be able to start to see it uh, firing up as a matter of fact you can't see it really but right there is a thin little line and it is coming online if we go to DX pool you can see last night I was messing around with this a little bit um, and then this morning I <laughs> was messing with it um, but I wanted to show you all this so let's see if we get another one it's gonna take a moment for this to really start to kick in uh, it does have the one inactive because it saw it from last night if we just click refresh it does take a minute for this to kick in and we will see uh, if we go over to our gold shell we can see this uh, spike up so we can see it's going you can see right here it is started it hasn't accepted anything yet so we're gonna wait for anything to get shown up and accepted once it shows accepted then we can go ahead and check DX pool and make sure it's mining and we're good to go now I do want to talk to you about DX pool and your profits these are your rewards and uh, actually um, let's see uh, profits and your wallet so um, I'm sorry assets on top so when you go to assets this is how you set this up now you don't need a wallet initially to get this going and I will have a link to SC's uh, wallet so you can uh, to their official site so you could download their wallet it's SIA dash UI uh, wallet and uh, you can download it to your PC and then you'll have their wallet the thing is is that with this here with the market the way it is there's really two options you can pick from you can do auto withdrawal or you can do a manual withdrawal it does require 1000 SC uh, coins in order to withdraw so you need to hit that threshold now it's like any other uh, mining pool you hit a threshold they pay out um, if you uh, don't want the payout Im in, 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 uh, immediately it will sit in their wallet unfortunately though it is their wallet so I'm not a big fan of that I'd rather have it in my wallet so I would want to do my payouts often now if the market was doing great you may just have it on auto withdrawal and you just taking your, your rewards as they come in and the market's doing great but right now the market is up and down so you may want to do manual withdrawal and again none of this is financial advice do its best for your pocket or pocketbook but if you do withdrawals as you click right here you can see that you just put your address the amount you want to withdraw and then hit submit and that's it and you get your money now there is a, like I said a 1000 SE coin minimum to get now here's the thing let's say you hit a thousand coins and it was on auto withdrawal it would automatically give you your thousand then you would get it rewards again it hits a thousand you get your money now let's say it got up to around 200 coins and the market tanks like it's been going up and down now and you decide you're going to shut yours off and wait till the market picks up well those 200 coins you mined are now going to be sitting in their wallet and not in your wallet until you hit the thousand threshold so this is where 
doing the manual withdrawal may be a better option in this market because maybe if you start to see the market uh, slumping and let's say you're at 1200 uh, coins in your uh, pool uh, rewards pool here uh, you would then turn your miner off and then withdraw the full 1200 if you had just been uh, doing auto withdraw and it was pulling the thousand thousand and then all of a sudden like i said the market starts to go down and you still had 200 coins in there you wouldn't be able to get them so if you just kind of watch the market and decide to do manual withdrawals i think that may be better in this market um, if you're looking to stack these coins and you're not looking to shut down at all, no matter what profitability is, then you may just want to go ahead and click on auto withdrawal. I'm stacking. I'm not selling. I've talked about that in other videos, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I will probably be doing the auto withdrawal and just let that run on its own. But that's just uh, so you can see what that is uh, going at. And let's see if we have any action in here. Let's go back over to Gold Shell. We do have two accepted, so we know that we are uh, mining. And where am I? DX pool. Let's see if it's going to pick that up. It may take just a little bit, like I said, because it's only accepted two shares. But while that's going on, let's go ahead and hop over and talk about profitability really quick. We can see on CoinGecko, uh, even Bitcoin, everything is down right now, 16,672. We can see this huge dip. This is the FTX collapse right here. And that sent everybody packing across the board for all cryptocurrencies. Everything is down right now. Uh, but as you could see prior to that, a um, lot of sideways trading, even a little up. We had a little bump, which was really exciting to see that happening. And then FTX brought everybody down. Uh, but it was real exciting to see everything start to go up a little bit. Even though it was minimal, um, it was nice to see. But as you can see, it's it's struggling to come back up right now. So let's go ahead and find SC Coin. Uh, it's right there. Uh, Saya, say, I don't know how to pronounce uh, a lot of these coins, so we're calling it the SC coin. And as you can see, uh, same thing, everything, uh, here's 30 days out, just dropped down when FTX went under. And look, it's sideways, and I'll take sideways trading any day. Um, that's no problem. In this market, the way things are, uh, this, not so good. This, I can live with this. A little of this is nice, but this I can live with. And um, and this is what it was doing. As a matter of fact, it was climbing just a little bit uh, until it just all of a sudden went down. So uh, yeah, a little bit there. Let's check out what Gold Shell with the um, uh, ASIC minor value. Now there's just reporting a little wrong today <laughs> as I'm making $30 a day. And I'll tell you what, friends, that would be something else. But unfortunately, we're not. It does report right here what we actually are making, 14 cents. And that's at our residential rate of 10 cents for, per kilowatt. So we are getting that 14 cents. If we go over to what to mine and look the same one up, we can see that it confirms 14 cents is what it is getting at that 10 cent kilowatt. So 14 cents a day right now. Um, you know, this was obviously a little bit higher. And, you know, when it's at 22 uh, cents, 23, 27, 28 cents, 30 cents. And then we just had this massive drop off. So it's down to 14 cents, but typically this would be 30 cents. And you may say, you know what, E, 30 cents, what are you, what are you doing? Let me tell you, friend, all of my GPUs are negative right now. Um, everything I have is practically negative. Uh, so, uh, my Z9, definitely negative. The Z11, both of those negative. Um, my L3 pluses, I don't know if they're still profitable. They had a little pump, but now with the recent dump on everything, they could be, everything is down right now. But I'll tell you what, this has got 14 cents a day. And you know what? Black is better than being in the red, right? So, you know, you make that decision for yourself on, um, you know, what you want to mine and what you want to do. But right now, this is profitable. This is profitable at 14 cents and I'll take it. So anyway, let's go ahead and check that out at DX Pool really quick one more time, and then we'll wrap this up. And look, if the video helped, I really appreciate you. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that always helps also. Uh, but it is reporting. You just can't see it because it's running into this one. 
Uh, but if we come down here, we can see that we have four accepted. So this is mining and it is going fine. It's practically whisper quiet down here. Um, I think I could bring this up with the power supply and just put that over here. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fan um, on idle, really, is the amount of noise that this thing is putting out. I'm putting this right next to the microphone and it puts out what they say is 35 decibels and they say that's about the same running as a refrigerator. And I'll tell you the truth, it is running just about as quiet as it could be. So uh, I am happy with the noise level. I am happy with the box and I'm happy that uh, I have it up and running. So I appreciate y'all checking in. Again, if you wanna to subscribe to the channel, hit the button right over there. If you wanna watch any of my other videos, I'm gonna have one right up over there for you. I appreciate all the thumbs up, I really do. Excuse me, if you get an SC box, I hope the video helped. I'll see y'all next time.